What's up and welcome to the DualSense Podcast. This is episode 126. I am one of your co-hosts, Jason. I'm joined again this week after him being MIA last week by your other co-host. He's also known as Travis. Travis, it's good to have you back. What's going Thanks, on? I had a nice sabbatical. You did. You certainly did. You've been having a lot of uh, sabbaticals. Yeah, nothing Jesus can't handle. Yeah, I, feel, I, actually, I think you need a real life sabbatical, probably. I, I could use that. one. Mm-hmm. I really use one, but that'll never happen. Yeah, you can sleep when you're dead, of course. Don't forget about that. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Being dead, can't wait. Mm. <laughs> no, my little cousin's birthday was today. He he got a PS5. When you say little, how little are we talking? Uh, 16. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was he excited? Anyway. Yeah, of course, you know, he, he got the Call of Duty version, and his oh. dad had already set it up, like downloaded everything. So they could play. So of course, when they plug it in, it it, it naturally has another update. So, so they can't, so they couldn't play it immediately. But um, while he was waiting on it to download, he was playing Astro's Playroom. I forgot how awesome that game is. Like even the way that that Astro runs, and like you know, like the way he pulls stuff and bashes things, and you know, it's a lot of uh, oh, it's just fun. Yeah. Was he excited to not have to play? a shitty Xbox anymore? Like, is he glad to have a real console? Yeah, his friend was trying to get to the homepage. He's like, I don't know how to get there. I'm used to Xbox. Hmm. Well, let's see. What have I been up to today? Well, earlier I was in the, I drove a float in the parade in our, mm-hmm. in our town's Christmas parade. So there's that. My wife was in it or had people in it, I should say, I guess. So that was something. And, uh, then I came home and been watching a little bit of Ghost Adventures while I was waiting on you to get done with your meal. You know, I, speaking of sabbaticals, I took a sabbatical from Ghost Adventures for several years, and uh, I'm back. I'm I'm back on the train. I'm like an alcoholic. You know what I mean? Like I I kicked the kicked the habit for a good while, but I got that got that I got, I got the sniff of it one time. You know, flipping channels, and I was like, "Ooh, this looks good." And uh, so I'm back, I'm back on Ghost Adventures. But anyway. You and I are a PlayStation podcast where we get together each and every week and we discuss all things like news, rumors, new game releases, and much more in the world of PlayStation. We do it all in under 90 minutes and we post new episodes on Monday on all of the usual podcast services around the globe. We also share it on YouTube where you can catch some gameplay videos as well. I've actually got one going up tomorrow. I'm interested to see the reaction to, and I'll talk a little bit more about it later, but we're also on social media. Of course, you can find us on Twitter at the DualSense pod. We're on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. If any of those tickle your fancy and we have a blog, which is called the DualSense podcast.wordpress.com. So you can find us there, get the show notes each week, get our bios, get some pictures of us, all the good stuff, all the things. And uh, without further ado here, Travis, let's jump into The first news story here, starting with number one. Hideo Kojima continued to tease what is presumably his next game this week by tweeting several fictional logos alongside the phrase, Start a New Journey. One such logo is for a fictional organization called the Automated Public Assistance Company, which fans noticed looks somewhat similar to the Bridges logo from Death Stranding. It is believed that Kojima is currently developing Death Stranding 2 for PlayStation, while simultaneously working on a title called Overdose for Xbox featuring actress Margaret Qualley. One thing we know for sure is what is that whatever the project is, it will star actresses Elle Fanning and Shiori Kitsuna. It's a safe bet that we will learn more at this week's Game Awards due to Kojima and host Jeff Keighley's close personal friendship. Uh, basically a bromance. So what do you think? Do you think that um, Kojima's is indeed doing Death Stranding too, and if so, does that do anything for you? I can't imagine he's not. I mean, it makes sense. The logos are kind of close, but the fact that they're kind of close makes me think that maybe in the in this fictional world, those two things either merged or split apart at some point. So it kind of makes me wonder if we're on a different timeline in Death Stranding two than we were on the first one. Um, mm-hmm. It kind of ties in at some point, yeah, and it's kind of like an Easter egg, so to speak. Um, well, I mean, it's mm-hmm. obviously an Easter egg of some sort the way he released it, but. We we know that this overdose thing is happening on Xbox, and it's kind of annoying to me that he just doesn't say he's making Death Stranding 2. I don't know. It's like, 
we, it's funny that we talked about, you know, a few weeks ago, how weird it is that everybody's telling us everything up front. And then like, mm. I'm like used to it now. <laughs> so I'm like, right. why isn't he just telling me everything, you know? But yeah, I don't know. I can't imagine what else it would be. And it's interesting that like, you know, I wonder how long this will continue with him using these actors and actresses that we have heard of to play these roles. In a sense, he's kind of merging gaming and film in, in a way by doing that kind of type of thing. Um, and we're sure. seeing that kind of pop up in other games too. With I mean, we, we, They've seen motion cap for a while with sports, but actually like actors being captured as opposed to rendered um, all the way out as opposed to just rendering the capture is kind of interesting to me. Just the question, the main question I have from this is like, do people actually like Jeff Keighley? Like, that's, that's a fair question. Like yeah. When I see him, anytime I see a video with him on it, I just don't, there's something about him. It's off putting to me. It's not that I don't like him. I, yeah. I, know, I don't know anything about the guy, but there's something yeah. about him. That's just odd to me. <laughs> I can't put my yeah. finger on what it is. Like, like to the point where I'm, I question his friendships with the gaming industry. Like, does he just blackmail them all? Like, I don't know. It's just odd to me. Like, there's something about him that's off-putting for me. No, I know exactly what you mean, because I have a similar feeling in that, like, pe- by all accounts, Jeff is a very nice guy. Right, like, right. When I, listen to other sh- when I listen to other shows and stuff, everybody talks about how he's a very nice man, which is great. But at the same, at the same time, he borderline is like a full-blown marketing bro, almost. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, he's a gamer for sure. He definitely plays games. Yeah, so he definitely, lo- he definitely, lo- yeah, he de- he definitely loves video games, but on the but like I said, he's borderline almost unlikable because he's almost he like he's he he straddles the line very well in terms of being like one of us, and then also being like a marketing bro. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's. I mean, part it's of as it. close as you can get. Like it's it's he's as close as you can get. He's the he, and he's probably the only person that can do it. But he's got to be careful. Because he's, you know, he does things with these shows now where there's advertisements in them all the time. And then he, he does these weird, like, musical performances and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's like stuff that they do at E3 and whatever. So, I don't know. But I know what you're saying. But anyway, back to <laughs> Hideo Kojima. Uh, definitely feel like it's death training, too. There's some theories out there this week that perhaps because there's three logos uh, in this thing that he tweeted out where he said, start a new journey. And one of them, it looks like some type of like Kraken or like octopus looking thing. So there's a theory that maybe at this point, this one takes place at sea, whereas the Ooh. first one took place in mainland United States. So there's a theory that maybe this one takes place in the ocean somehow I like or, this. or on the ocean. Yeah. Um, I definitely think it's a good, good thought process or good train of thought that it, that it takes place somewhere else in the world, potentially. I, I feel like, I mean, it could take place in the U.S. again, definitely could based on where the first one left things, but I feel like perhaps it could take place in a different part of the world. Just a theory. I don't know, but I could, I like the ocean one too. That That's something different. That sounds interesting. So I don't think we'll have to wait much longer. As I said, I think we're going to know on Thursday at the game awards. Um, that seems like pretty much stone cold lock for Kojima to be there, but who knows? He could surprise us and it may not, he may not say anything about death stranding at all. It might be this overdose game for xbox so it's really hard to say now that we know that he's doing these two things simultaneously the other thing that's interesting about this just a wrinkle is that there's this kind of growing sense that playstation in particular but perhaps microsoft are really trying to avoid making any type of big announcements of inter- as far as games or uh, you know anything like that which some speculate that's why we haven't gotten a showcase from playstation because we had been getting one um, at least one big one a year. So there's speculation that we won't uh, get anything out of PlayStation until maybe March, April, or after the Activision Blizzard is fully reviewed and vetted and all that, which would be ridiculous in my opinion. So, yeah, but I feel like that could drag on for way longer than that. Yeah, you never very know. well could. Because, yeah, just because those regulatory bodies set deadlines of March 1st or April 1st or whatever, like, you know, they can move the goalposts. It happens all the time. It's government, basically. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, just to maybe it has nothing to do with it. Maybe the two have nothing to do with each other. But it's just an interesting little note that perhaps it's not Death Stranding two for that very reason. But uh, we won't have to wait much longer to see. Just a couple days. Number two, 
The PlayStation Tournaments feature finally made its way to PlayStation 5 this week, and it aims to make competitive tournaments a breeze for players to both enter and enjoy. Some of the main features include shorter tournament times, on-console signups, easily discoverable tournaments, a new user interface, real-time match updates, and other quality of life improvements. The first batch of games that support tournaments on PS5 is Guilty Gear Strive, NBA 2K23, and FIFA 23. Alongside the launch on PS5, PlayStation is hosting a quote-unquote win-a-thon event from December the 1st to January 31st, which allows players to win cash prizes, PS5 consoles, Pulse 3D headsets, and the DualSense Edge controller by climbing the event leaderboards. More supported games will be added in the future, including some PlayStation Studios titles, so some first-party titles. But uh, what do you think about the tournaments feature? Tournaments are cool, and it's nice that it's kind of consolidated into one area as opposed to, like, you know, how it normally is. You have to have, like, some sort of group you find or event you find. Now it's on my page, and I can, like, just randomly play if I want to. That's nice. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm curious about the PlayStation Studio titles because the games right now that we can play on the tournaments make sense to me. Um, Any kind of fighting game makes sense. Like, you would assume there'll be, like, a multiverses tournament at some point. Like, you could kind of do the math, right? Yeah. Like yeah, because when you when you say PlayStation Studios, I automatically think of The Last of Us or Ghost of Tsushima. So it's like, how do how does The Last of Us do this, or like how does Uncharted do this? You're missing a big one. You're missing your boys. Gran Turismo Seven, I think, is the first one uh, and the most obvious. Oh, I guess we already have those. On we have we have we we have seasons and stuff, but that's fine. Anyway, yeah. You know, I think it's kind of shitty to win a tournament on a PS5 and then win a PS5, so I don't really know why we're giving away, like, we should yeah. give away other things. Like, even if I won I won the leaderboard, you, you sent me a new controller, like, I, I don't, give me, what are you doing? Like, anyway, I don't know. I don't know what I expect, but that's not it. I would rather get a free year of, of PlayStation Premium than another controller or something, but. Um, sure. I understand that they're just giving away stuff that, that doesn't impact them at all because they can write it all off, so it's probably easier for them. But mm. I think it'll be interesting to see kind of how it takes off. You know, esports are a big thing, um, and, and for a lot of people, esports are kind of like their passion, so it'll be interesting mm-hmm. to see if it kind of catches fire with that group and, and grows. But, you know, the interface seems nice and from what I've seen, and can't really complain about you know, you just can't really complain about the ease of it, really. I was curious about this after this came out, so I uh, went to... It's it's really simple. It is quite simple. I have to give them credit for that. I scrolled over to NBA 2K23 on my PS5, and, you know, you can just uh, scroll down on that, and you get the game page or whatever. So on that NBA 2K23 game page, there's just a list of tournaments, and you can just scroll and scroll and scroll. And there's tournaments happening like every 15 minutes or so, I would say. Some uh, have bigger rewards than others. So like on NBA 2K, for instance, I didn't play one, but I was just looking around, getting a feel for it. So like, and they're free to enter. So you can enter like an eight person or 16 person tournament on 2K. And the winner gets like um, $5 worth of VC, which is the in-game currency on 2K. Or there was another one where you could win $15 worth of uh, in-game currency, for instance. So that was just the one I looked at. I didn't look at the FIFA one. Uh, I should have done that to see what kind of rewards it has. Um, I'm guessing like foot coins or whatever the hell. So, I mean, it it definitely looked seamless and I could click on it and I could see um, like what the time frame was and, you know, when it would start and how many players, et cetera, and all that. So, um, and I could just do it right from the main menu right there on PS5. So definitely seemed pretty seamless in my opinion. Um, and I may give it a shot at some point. You know, to see. I mean, I'm not good at sports games. You have you have a much better chance of winning one of these eight or sixteen player tournaments than I do. That's for <laughs> sure. But, uh, but yeah, it's a cool feature to have. And I think that as they kind of expand this and get into some of the PlayStation Studios titles, I think that'll be really cool as well. As I mentioned, I think Gran Turismo Seven will be one of the first ones to get support for this. Some some type of racing tournaments through the tournaments uh, app or whatever feature. I'm trying to think of what else there could be, like you said, because you can't really do do anything with like Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us, but certainly MLB The Show, uh, Gran Turismo 7. And then as we start to get these free-to-play games, I'm sure that'll play a part somehow um, here before too long. So, yeah, that'd be cool. Number three. 
PlayStation also announced the lineup of games coming to the essential tier of PlayStation Plus for the month of December. The Founders Edition of third-person platform fighter Divine Knockout will be available on PS4 and PS5. This is a brand new title that is launching directly into PlayStation Plus. Sounds like the non-Founders Edition is a free-to-play game, by the way. Also included in the lineup is the Mass Effect Legendary Edition for PS4, which includes the first three titles in the Legendary Sci-Fi RPG series, as well as all DLC content. And the last game on offer is Open World RPG, or excuse me, Open World Action RPG, Bio Mutant, for both PS4 and PS5. It received mixed reviews at launch on PS4, but has since received a PS5 version that supports 4K and HDR. Interestingly, website Pushsquare noticed that the graphic for Divine Knockout included a small label of "quote unquote day one release," indicating that the title was was releasing day one on the PlayStation Plus. As I mentioned. It is not previously something that had been labeled in that regard, perhaps suggesting that more titles will be releasing day one onto the service. Of course, there are several other titles that have done so in the past, including games like Fall Guys and Hell Let Loose. So what do you think about the lineup? The lineup is actually things I've heard of. Not superbly Mm -hmm. interested in playing Mass Effect or Biomutant, but at least I know what they are. So the fact that a casual person knows what they are definitely shows a little bit of value there. So you can't be too upset. It's it's better than what we've seen in some of the past. Um, like we said, you know, we've been critical of kind of the new tiered system and, you know, the value isn't there at the top tier. But who knows, maybe in mm-hmm. six months we'll finally see it. Like, you know, like like, like like everything in the last two two years, maybe they released it a little bit early. <laughs> but But we'll see. Um, the day one release thing's definitely a new thing. That's definitely going to be on a lot of games from now on. It's, it's you know, I think they tried it with Fall Guys and Hell Let Loose, which is interesting because those did pretty well. I would venture to say Divine Knockout doesn't do as well as those, but I would say for sure that this day one release thing is real. That that does make me wonder about it if they're just going to keep pushing that uh, or push it more, I guess I should say, because like I mentioned, you know, we have, we've gotten games before day one. Um, they just kind of seem like few and far between like Fall Guys, Hell It Loose. I think even Arcade Again ended up being a day one when it came out of early access. So we definitely get them. So maybe they're doing more or maybe they're just drawing attention to it now with kind of a little graphic or logo, you know, whatever the case. Sometimes it's just a little marketing thing that they they mix up. So curious about that. But I think overall it's a good month. Um, you know, Mass Effect, that's a that's a big one, obviously. A much beloved series. Uh, much beloved, I should say. So I'm gonna I'm gonna claim it. I'm not gonna download it right now. I just don't have time to play it. But I've been curious about it many times. I've almost bought it a couple times when it was on like a deep sale. So, um, you know, waiting paid off in this instance. So I'm gonna claim that for sure. Maybe check that out one day. Um, I just hate that that it's only on PS4, but it is it is what it is. Bio Mutant. I feel like I played a demo for it, but I can't remember if it was the PS5 version or not. So. Um, it's okay if I remember correctly. It's not nothing spectacular, but it's it's one of those games that is a double A. You know, it's a double A game, and it's very double A in that regard, which is which is fine. We need games in that space too. And then uh, Divine Knockout. I'm pure, pretty curious about that. I and it's free, so obviously it doesn't hurt. But we talked about this last week. Actually, I think it was announced perhaps, and it's kind of a like a spinoff of Smite. It's if the characters are different gods from different what's uh, mythologies, uh, different gods from different mythologies. So that's kind of cool. Seems interesting. I might, I'm probably going to download that one of the three and check it out and uh, see if it's any good. So yeah, it's a decent little month for PlayStation Plus and we are still awaiting to hear what will be added for the extra and premium tiers for December. And we should hear about that probably I would say not this week, but next week, uh, if I'm keeping track. Number four, we also have a bunch of news nuggets here as well. Travis, feel free to join me here. Jump in wherever you see fit. First nugget, news outlet Reuters reported that Microsoft is unlikely to offer concessions to the European Union regulators regarding the Activision deal in order to push the acquisition through. The main one is expected to be a 10-year licensing deal with Sony over access to Call of Duty. The EU has previously set a deadline of April 11th to make their decision. And uh, that's interesting considering that I think we talked about last week that PlayStation declined a 10-year deal with Microsoft 
over uh, Call of Duty, so it doesn't seem like that's going to get it done. But uh, we'll see. And that probably could have been a full-blown news item in and of itself, but I'm really just exhausted with talking about this and cannot wait for it to be over. We have so many months left of this. Uh, at least through April, it seems like. Next nugget. God of War Ragnarok won its first and potentially last Game of the Year award this week as Time Magazine bestowed the award upon PlayStation the latest crown jewel. So I say last because obviously there's Elden Ring out there breathing down its neck as well, but we'll see what happens at the Game Awards on Thursday. Developer Bonus Level Entertainment revealed the third playable character this week for their arcade-style side-scrolling RPG Saga of Sins, and uh, I seem to have missed the first two character reveals, so there's that. Also, Sony announced a refresh of the PlayStation Stars program for the month of December, with both reward points and new digital collectibles on offer. PlayStation Plus members can get 50 points just for playing the December lineup of new PlayStation Plus games. That's nice of them. Speedrunning first-person shooter Neon White is making its way to PS4 and PS5 on December the 13th. It's supposed to be very good. It's like a, like a 90 on Metacritic. Website Gaming Nexus reported that 12-player cooperative first-person shooter Starship Troopers Extermination was announced for PC. Based on the 1997 film, the game is only planned for PC for a PC release at this point, but here's to hoping for a release on PlayStation because that sounds very dope. I would love to play I that. I hate that movie. You hate the movie because all the spiders and shit? All right. I've lost Travis. I had him for just a few moments. And uh, he's having some internet problems, so here I am once again, flying solo. And uh, I'll continue on here, sadly, without him. All right, next nugget. Ubisoft's real-time strategy reboot The Settlers' New Allies will get a console release sometime next year, following the game hitting PC on February 17th. Very excited about this. Very excited about this. Looks good. Speaking of Ubisoft, they announced a new expansion for Far Cry 6 called Lost Between Worlds. It is releasing on December the 6th for $20, or will be available as part of the game's season pass. Visual novel sports management game Roller Drama was announced to be coming to PlayStation consoles at some point next year, and uh, this game looks really cool. looks very unique. It doesn't look like anything that I've played before. looks very good. You should look that up. Also, simulation game Chef Life, a restaurant simulator, will launch on PS4 and PS5 on February 2nd filling the void left by Dead Island 2's delay. The second season of Overwatch 2 kicks off on December the 6th, featuring a bunch of cosmetic items. Along those lines, King of Fighters will get its second season of content in January, with cross-play also incoming sometime in the spring. 2D side-scrolling adventure game Vengeful Guardian Moonrider will, re- will release on PS4 and PS5 on January 12th. World War II multiplayer shooter Hell at Loose is getting a new update on December 5th that will add a snow-covered version of Kharkov, the flamethrower weapon, Molotov cocktails, the Willis Jeep, the Kubelwagen, and the Soviet T-70 light tank. Acclaimed VR cooperative zombie shooter After the Fall from Vertigo Games is coming to PlayStation VR 2 on February 22nd, so a day one title for the headset. It is being called the quote-unquote complete edition and will feature 4K, HDR graphics, headset feedback, and support for the Sense Controller haptics and adaptive triggers. Two new locations are being added as well, Hospital and Subway. And that looks very good. uh, It's on my list for sure for launch. Also, Dead Island 2 is hosting a gameplay showcase on December the 6th. It will feature some sort of live-action film, followed by an actual extended gameplay trailer. Don't know how I feel about the live action film thing. Why I don't understand why they can't just show us a gameplay trailer, but I guess there wouldn't be a showcase if it was just a uh, gameplay trailer, so we'll see. Also, website Video Games Chronicle reported that Grand Turismo director Kazunori Yamauchi has confirmed that Polyphony Digital is quote unquote looking into releasing a PC port of Grand Turismo 7. I think that's inevitable. Street Fighter 6 has been rated in Korea, which means that a release is imminent. Publisher Capcom has previously said that they wouldn't be releasing any major games before April of 2023, so it's safe to assume that Street Fighter VI is launching sometime in the spring, perhaps as early as April. 
A Spanish theme park is developing a roller coaster based on the Uncharted games, with it planned to open sometime in 2023. So interesting that it's in Spain, but it's, I guess, you know, that makes sense in a way, I guess. Final Fantasy 16 has been rated in Brazil, so expect a release date for it soon. In fact, Jeff Keighley announced that the game's producer, Naoki Yoshida, would be at the Game Awards for a quote-unquote very special live presentation. So expect a release date announcement there. Insider The Snitch, who now writes for website Insider Gaming, claims that Final Fantasy 16 will, re- will be released on June 22nd for PS5. Also, a stripped-down version of the original Call of Duty Warzone was put back online this week after being taken down for two weeks to focus on Warzone 2.0's release. Developer CD Projekt Red confirmed that the upcoming remake of the original Witcher game will be an open-world title with modern accoutrements. CD Projekt Red also revealed that they, that they would be doing more transmedia projects following the success of Cyberpunk Edge Runners on Netflix. Free-to-play Disney character kart racing game Disney Speedstorm has been delayed to 2023. Free Sonic Frontiers DLC will include new story content and playable characters coming in 2023. Next year's Summer Game Fest will take place on Thursday, June 8th, just three days before the return of E3 begins. So Keeley and E3 are going to go toe-to-toe next year. That'll be interesting to see what ends up where. It uh, seems like there's going to be some choices to, uh, to make there for some of these publishers. Disney Dreamlight Valley's Toy Story update on December the 6th will also add Stitch to the game from Lilo and Stitch, as well as new outfits for NPCs. Street Fighter VI will get a second closed beta this month from December 16th to December 19th. You can apply now on the Capcom website. Players will be chosen via a lottery system. I should have included this up there with the uh, release date news, I'm sorry. Also, newly launched survival horror game The Callisto Protocol detailed its post-launch plans this week. On February 7th, all players will receive free access to New Game Plus and hardcore modes. After that, Starting in March, a series of DLC bundles will be on the way, including the Outer Way Skin Collection, the Contagion Bundle, the Riot Bundle, and a new Story DLC. And uh, this game is getting average reviews. It's in the 70s on Metacritic, like 74, I think. Also, some PlayStation 1 classics available on PS Plus Premium have finally been updated to the 60Hz versions in Europe, if you've been waiting. Modern Warfare 2's delayed CDL Mosh Pit competitive playlist is now live in-game. Website GamesIndustry.biz reported that a quote-unquote loot box bill has been filed within the Australian government this week. If passed, it would amend the country's classification board rules to require that any game with loot boxes be rated R18+, or even denied classification altogether, in an effort to keep children from purchasing and playing games with loot boxes. Loot box titles would also be required to include a warning label on the box. It's uh, pretty interesting, something to keep an eye on. may pave the way if it goes through for uh, this to happen in other countries. Also, new co-chairman and CEO of DC Studios, James Gunn, stated this week that future DC video games will be a part of the DC Cinematic Universe. be interesting to see what they can do with that. Website Pushsquare reported that the Dark Pictures Switchback VR will be a PSVR 2 launch title on February 22nd. By my count, this marks 12 titles confirmed as launch date releases for the next-gen VR headset. Ubisoft dropped the last chapter DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla a week early this week. It also features a quest with one of Assassin's Creed Mirage's characters as a sort of sneak peek for that game. Quirky Management Sim 2 Point Campus is getting a Space Academy DLC on December the 6th. Sounds fun. Sony Proper's Japan branch revealed a series of motion capture sensors this week called Mokopi. They are designed to be used in conjunction with a mobile device for augmented reality, but are also compatible with the popular VR chat and virtual virtual motion capture. While not directly PlayStation related, it is possible that this technology could come to PlayStation VR 2 down the road. The Yakuza series' popular cabaret mini-game is making its return in the upcoming Like a Dragon Gaiden, The Man Who Erased His Name. Tekken 8 will make an appearance at this week's Game Awards per a Twitch streamer and fighting game commentator, Eris, who received a package advising him to tune in on December the 8th. HBO revealed in show looks at nearly all of the cast of its Last of Us series this week. 
if you're interested. And they also revealed the first full length trailer for it today. It's out there too. Website Insider Gaming reported that Monster Hunter Rise will be making its way to PlayStation 5 on January 20th and will support 4K at 60 frames per second as well as 3D audio. And this has since been officially confirmed. It's coming to PlayStation on January 20th. Also, Assassin's Creed Mirage has been internally delayed and is now expected to release in August of next year. The quote-unquote smaller scale Assassin's Creed title was originally anticipated sometime in the spring. Insider Gaming also reported that development is sputtering on Assassin's Creed Red, the Japan-based entry in the series, while on the contrary, development on Hexi, the European witch hunt title, is going quite well and will soon enter full production. A large Jurassic World Evolution 2 expansion is dropping on December the 8th and will feature the Dominion film quite heavily. Game credits for the Callisto Protocol revealed that around 150 employees of PlayStation's Visual Arts Services Group and Malaysian support studio helped developer Striking Distance Studios bring the game to life. This, of course, follows former head of PlayStation Visual Arts Services Group, Michael Mumbauer, tweeting a few weeks back that the group had done quite a bit on this game. It's been cooperated now. Also, insider Tom Henderson reported this week that Ubisoft's Beyond Good and Evil 2 is still in early development, despite being in the works for 15 years. Jesus. Diablo 4 is set to get a release date announcement at the Game Awards, as well as a potential announcement for an open beta, according to insider Tom Henderson. Cyberpunk 2077 will be getting a Game of the Year edition in 2023 after the launch of the Phantom Liberty expansion and another quote-unquote substantial update, said the company's CEO this week. Also, website PlayStation Lifestyle reported that demos once again have their own section on the PlayStation Store, which of course is the way it always used to be. So now we have a dedicated demo section once again, which is cool. Gotham Knights received its free four-player co-op heroic assault mode this week. Your next chance to pre-order PlayStation VR 2 will be on Tuesday, December the 6th. You will need to sign up for an invitation on the PlayStation Direct website. Amazon's Fallout television series will feature an original story that is set in the same world as the games. It's good to know. Good to know. Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Destiny 2 are having a crossover event starting on December the 6th, with the two titles sharing cosmetic items with each other. Website PlayStation Universe reported that the following games received update patches this week. Warframe, Terraria, Apex Legends, FIFA 23, Gotham Knights, Minecraft Dungeons, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Marvel's Avengers, Sniper Elite 5, Smite, Elite Dangerous, Dead by Daylight, Resident Evil Village, and Chivalry 2. EA has confirmed in a new blog post that Battlefield 2042 Season 4 will launch in early 2023, while a fifth season of post-launch content will be coming after that, but will not include a new specialist. It will, however, include all of the other usual content, such as a map, weapons, and a new battle pass. The map for Season 5 is said to be a reimagining of a Battlefield 4 location. Sounds cool. Also, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution has been confirmed for a March 21st launch on PSVR 2, according to the game's PlayStation Store page. Although I don't really understand why this was making the rounds this week being reported. This has been on the PlayStation Store app for weeks now, so I guess people just missed it. Also, all Elite Wrestling developer Ukes has confirmed that wrestler CM Punk has not been removed from the upcoming game after all. In other PSVR 2 news, Supermassive Games The Dark Pictures Switchback VR was confirmed to be a day one launch game for the new VR headset. PUBG is getting a revamp of the fan favorite Vikendi map on December the 6th for PC and December December 15th for consoles. Narrative-focused exploration title Hindsight will make its way to PS4 and PS5 on December 6th. Gotham Knights developer Warner Brothers Games is continuing to staff up for its next project, which seems like it will include a multiplayer according to new job listings at the company. Website Gamatsu reported that Metroidvania Souls-like horror game Grime will release on PS4 and PS5 on December 15th. Multiplayer third-person looter shooter Saint has added console versions, although specific platforms were not announced, it is expected to want to release sometime next year. Retro City Smash 'em Up Kaiju Game Terror of Hemosaurus will launch on PS4 and PS5 on December the 7th. Turn-based mystery RPG Mato Anomalies will launch for PS5 and PS4 on March 10th. 
adventure game Sharone the Dragon Girl dropped this week on PS4. Dark adventure game Children of Silent Town will launch on PS4 and PS5 on January 11th. 3D platformer Cyberhook will come to PS4 on December the 9th. Narrative adventure game Goodbye Volcano High has been delayed to summer of 2023 on PS4 and PS5. Action adventure game Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara has been delayed to 2023 on PS4 and PS5. Action creature collecting game Adore was announced for PS4 and PS5, but no release date was given. Snowboarding game Shredders will release on PS5 on December the 6th. Open world dress up adventure game Infinity Nikki was announced for PS4 and PS5 from Chinese developer Paper Games. I don't know what that means. I don't know what a dress up adventure game is. No idea. Narrative puzzle game The Forest Quartet launches December 8th for PS4 and PS5. Roguelite action game Flamekeeper was announced for PS4 and PS5. It is planned to release sometime next year. The PlayStation Plus Premium tier appears to be getting the PSP version of Star Wars Battlefront 2 at some point in the future after a PlayStation Store page was discovered for the title. Free-to-play adventure game Sky Children of Light from the developers of Journey will release on PS4 on December the 6th. Survival horror game Amnesia The Bunker, the latest installment in the Amnesia series, was announced for PS4 from developer Frictional Games and is scheduled to release in March of next year. And finally, Gamatsu reported that publisher 505 Games are teasing the announcement of a new title at next week's Game Awards with a video featuring Reservoir Dogs and Kill Bill actor Michael Madsen, which invites players to quote-unquote visit Rock A City. All right, that's... uh. It's actually pretty exciting. It's some cool artwork on the website, so we'll see what that ends up being on Thursday. That's all for the news this week. Now get the new game releases for the week. On November the 29th, we got Backpack Twins on PS4, Charlie the Roach on PS5, Last Days of Lazarus on PS5, Monster Truck Journey on PS5 and PS4, Sable came to PS5, Soccer Story on PS5 and PS4, Solstice on Solstice, excuse me, on PS5 and PS4, Speedrunner Ultra on PS4. Then on the, on uh, November the 30th, we got Astro Knight on PS5 and PS4, Elevator Action Returns S Tribute on PS4, Flat Out Pixel Racing on PS5, Gundam Evolution PS5 and PS4, Marcy's Adventure on PS4, Megalan Megalan on PS5 and PS4. Sword of the Vagrant on PS5 and PS4, The Beast Inside on PS5, The Outbound Ghost on PS5 and PS4, United Assault, Battle of the Bulge on PS4, Until the Last Plane on PS5 and PS4, Watch Over Christmas on PS4, it's a lot on November the 30th, Jesus. And then on December, December the 1st, we got Asterix and Obelix Triple X, or Double XL, excuse me, Romastered on PS5, Romancing Saga, Minstrel Song Remastered on PS5 and PS4, Warp Drive on PS5 and PS4. And then on December the 2nd, we got Christmas Run 2 on PS5 and 4, Fast Riders Unlimited Road on PS4, Intrepid Izzy on PS5 and 4, Marvel's Midnight Suns on the 5 and 4, Need for Speed Unbound on the 5 and 4, Sakura Succubus 6 on 5 and 4, The Callisto Protocol on the 5 and 4, The Jumping Chaco Santa on PS5 and PS4, The Night Witch on PS5 and PS4, and yeah, I already said the outbound ghost. I don't know how that happens. But anyway, that's it for the new releases this week. Pretty big list and some uh, some big ones here. So Need for Speed Unbound, Marvel's Midnight Suns, Callisto Protocol. Those are three very big ones uh, releasing this week. The biggest for sure. But uh, the outbound ghost looks cool. It's kind of like a paper Mario RPG looking thing. Uh, the Night Witch also looks cool. It's like a twin stick shooter. Side scrolling thing looks pretty cool. What else here? I thought that Soccer Story game looked cool, but I don't think it's getting very good reviews. Sable uh, is is on PlayStation now, and that uh, I played a demo for that on Game Pass a while back. That's a pretty cool game, worth worth checking out. I think it's on a twenty five percent discount right now. But yeah, that's all for the new games this week. Pretty lengthy list, so I'll start to wrap the show up now since I'm again flying solo. Don't have Travis. It'll just be me. I think I'm going to wrap it up with what I've been playing and anything that I'm looking forward to in the week ahead. 
So I played a little bit of Modern Warfare 2 this weekend, or this week, I should say. Nothing crazy, nothing really to say about that. Also played some Battlefield 2042, nothing more to say about that. Just playing the new season, uh, which is great. And I uh, need to go play some more of that as soon as possible to try to keep pace on the Battle Pass. But uh, that's it's been good. I played some more God of War Ragnarok um, over the weekend, last weekend, I believe. I'm probably 35 ish percent through somewhere around there i still have a lot of main story quests left and i think at some point i'm just going to have to like main on that uh the story quest because it's just going to take so long and uh, that's my only gripe about the game really so far is that it's just too long it's too much too much game but uh maybe, maybe i'm crazy for saying that but it's it's just too much uh but i'm enjoying it quite a bit the uh i actually like the story and the characters the most you know the combat's really good obviously but the uh, the story and the characters are really uh, kind of pulling me in, and uh, I'm interested to see where they're taking the story because it seems like they're being pretty obvious with what is coming. But I feel like that that's not the going to be the case. You know, I feel like that's a little bit of sleight of hand, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So we'll see. I also played a little bit of Dying Light too. Uh, my friend Jacob, our friend Jacob, finally got his PS5. And so I'd been holding out all these months to play Dying Light 2 with him. And we played for a little while over the weekend, played a few missions. And uh, the problem is, is trying to sync up my schedule with his. So I don't know how much we'll actually get to play. But uh, the last thing that I've been playing is uh, Need for Speed Unbound. I'm actually reviewing Need for Speed for Gaming Nexus currently right now. And uh, so I won't give my kind of full impressions on that. I'll save it for the full review, but in a nutshell, it is very good. It is quite good. I would say actually, uh, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I think the, uh, it looks stunning. The soundtrack is wonderful. It's fun to race. I'm uh, the cops in the game are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. Um, I don't know if I'll have to end up turning the difficulty down or not, but they are, They'll get you, especially at some of the higher like heat levels or wanted levels or whatever. So I'm really enjoy I'm really enjoying it. But, uh, it's pretty good so far. But uh, yeah, that's it. It's all been playing. So uh, I will. Sorry, actually, there's one more thing. I think I can say this, but I, I'm also in addition to Need for Speed, I'm also reviewing Firefighting Simulator: The Squad uh, for Gaming Nexus on PlayStation. I'm playing on PS5, of course. So I've just dabbled in that just a very little bit. And I have a YouTube video up right now, actually, of some early gameplay, if you're curious to see what that looks like. But I uh, felt like it was only natural after I played and reviewed Police Simulator. So I'm going to see how that is. But I'm going to focus on Need for Speed first and then move on to, to that. So those are the couple things that I'm looking forward to this week. Of course, looking forward to the Game Awards. Curious to see if any cool stuff gets announced or if we get any good updates on some of the stuff that's already out there. I would really love to see that game in the finals, which is being made by Embark Studios, who is made up of a bunch of old DICE Battlefield developers. So that game looks super cool. And the last time we saw it, I think, was at Summer Game Fest, maybe, which is a Keeley joint. So, And then before that, we saw their other game, which I can't remember what it's called, Arc Raiders. We saw that game last year at the Game Awards. But we now know that the finals is coming first. It's a first-person uh, free to play shooter, something, some type of shooter. It looks really good. So I'm wondering if maybe we'll get like a stealth, like not a stealth release, but like a a very soon release date for that. That would be very cool. So I'm kind of hoping so. But other than that, just wondering if Sony will be there in any capacity, meaning PlayStation or what Hideo Kojima is going to announce there. I'm certain he'll be there, but remains to be seen if it's PlayStation or xbox so we'll see anyway i'm gonna get out of here now that's it for me that's it for the show if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to get a new episode delivered to you every monday on your podcast feed or youtube if you listen there also if you could leave us a rating or review some some stars hearts whatever it might be leave us a thumbs up leave us a comment if you're on youtube uh that's very helpful also helpful if you could share us with a friend or a loved one who you think might, might enjoy this show where they can get all of the week's PlayStation news in less than 90 minutes, please send us their way. We would love to talk at them as well, as well, I should say. 
And uh, don't forget to find us on social media if you would want to talk with us. We would love to hear from you. We would love to chat PlayStation. You can find us on Twitter at the Dulcens Pod. We're also on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and we have a blog which is called the Dulcens Podcast. WordPress.com. So please find us and hit us up. We'd love to hear from you. And maybe next week I can keep Travis. You know, I get him. I didn't have him. I get him back, and I only have him for like twenty minutes. It's terrible. It's uh, it's awful. So maybe I can get him back and keep him back uh, for for next week. So we'll we'll work on that. But uh, anyway, you guys take care. Thank you for listening. Have a great week. Hope we uh, get a good game awards, and uh, we'll talk at you next time. Bye bye.